once again. It's 1046, 14 March 2024. And I'm starting this one first. Then I'm starting this one here. Go live. Come on. There you go. Going live. <clears throat> and then um, now I'm live. I should, wait, am I live? I'm live. Great. Okay. Let me rewind this. This has full auto stop, but I'm going to show you how I repaired this to begin with. On screen you're looking at an interpretation of the controls on the top of this unit. Alright. This, I'm rewinding this, I'm going to use this as a timer. And just play some music for my demonstration tape. This out of the way. And then, um, let's see, so I'm going to go to my pictures. So here are my pictures. Okay, so open with there. So this is the first picture that I took on the 13th of March 2024. And this is um, as I got this. The only the cosmetic issue is it's missing this one screw for the cassette deck door, but the cassette deck door is held on. So that's the only cosmetic issue that I know of. But I got it like that. So I don't know where that part is. It got lost way before I ever got it. Okay, so there it goes. Is that the end of the tape? Full auto stop. Yay. So now hit play. Let me get the music on and adjust the volume a bit so I can you can hear me over it. Okay, so turn that down. That's the tape playing on this. Sharp GF 305 ST. So now let me get my keyboard so I can go through these pictures. So that's like I said, the front of this unit. Here's the top of the unit. Okay. It's got the best I can tell you. It's got a. Um, this is your. This right here is your light. Let me show that. This is your light. It only works when it's plugged in. Doesn't work on batteries. Okay. So that's your light switch. Lights up the VU meters and the tuning thing, so it's a momentary, so as soon as you release it, it, let, it stops off. Okay. You got your left and right recording controls, your left and right balance and treble, your left and right, um, what do you call it, volume. You got your edit button for editing. This is, um, let's see, your pause button, your Fast forward, play, record, rewind, and eject. And this is your um, music search one way, this is your music search the other way. That's your stop button overall. This is your cut button when you're in the fast forward rewinding mode in the music search feature. You hit this and it'll, it'll stop it, but not stop it completely. It's just stop the rewinding, all right? This is your power switch, this is your tape switch, this is your phono switch, this is your uh, line-in switch, AM and FM, and these I can't remember, so I have to go back to the picture. Okay, so that's your mic input. <coughs> so your mic input, your manual or auto recording, so either it'll set your levels for you or you can manually do it. And then this one is um, your metal or I'm sorry, your chrome or normal tape switch. switch. And this is your mono, uh, stereo, and stereo wide switch. All right. And that's it for the top controls. Right. And then go here. Oh no! What happened? Oh, the computer slowed down. Got to wait for the computer to come back up. The hard drive went to sleep. That's all. Okay. All right. So this is this end. This is the tuning end. What's on this end? Nothing, just a tuning knob, okay? <clears throat> this is the, uh, well I took a closer picture of that, but that's the other end, the power input end, which has got a AC, put, AC input and a DC input, okay? Here's your back, okay? It's back without a flash. Here's a close-up view of this, which is the rear label. Whoops, okay. This is your microphone input. This is your line in, your line out your external speakers and your beat cancel for recording with AM. This is your uh, tape deck speed control, your tape counter, and your echo. Okay, 
I don't know how the echo works, but anyway, that's the bottom. This again is the top. That's that side again. This is the back with the battery compartment open. That was rusted, but it's anyway. That's how the screws come out or where they go and the length and size of them. Okay. This is what it looks like when it opens up. There's a flash picture just because. It's a picture of the speakers. Picture of this side where the wires go because this is very important because when you go to separate the main front from the back you need to anyway. Another picture just because and then I labeled the two individual black wires that go to here. This is where your left and right wires go and then up here these are not labeled as far as they're both the same color so I labeled them myself left and right before I took them off. This is the um, well, you know, the speakers. That's the tweeter. Okay, five centimeters, four ohms, ten watts. And that's the woofer, which is um, 16 centimeters, four ohms. And there is a, um, I didn't get that, but that there's your uh, six decibel per octave crossover for the tweeter. This is the cassette deck door mechanism, just in case I needed an issue with the spring, but you didn't. That's all it has is just a spring. There's no damping on this that I know of. All right. Then this is just the inside front picture of the back. Okay, just an overall picture. Then here's a picture of this and the. This is oh, anyway. It's not there. <laughs> Looking for it, but it's not there at all. So there's another picture. It might be there, but that's for the flash, for the flashlight, but it's definitely not touching. This is in play mode. Okay, so when you take it apart, take out these four screws to remove the, the uh, tuner window panel thing, whatever. Now I'll take a picture of this side just so you can see where it goes, where, whatever came from, or whatever, you know. Took a picture of this side just again, just you know, make sure where everything goes. Okay, another front on picture of just a tape deck. Okay, I tried to get this to get, let's well, see, did I? I didn't move it yet. Okay, then this is uh, that side there. I was looking for the screw, and there it is. There is a screw underneath that you lift it up, it, it falls in that little channel there. If you take one apart, you'll understand it. There's the motor. Here, let me get a close-up of that so you can see it. There, that's the motor number. It's IF250R019018-B. Okay. Anyway. And I unplug that, take a picture. Okay. There's the screws to hold the tape deck in place. They're different sizes, all four of them. And here's the picture of the top. Take those off, to take that off. Wait, let me throw that again. You have to take these, take those off, and you take off the, the round knob thing, and the, the rest you leave alone. Then you take that off, and then you have this underneath it, okay? And that's what that looks like, okay? And that's what that looks like. And then this is a picture of the, um, you gotta remove that grounding wire to remove the tape deck, so there it is. And then there's the tape deck almost out. Then you got to remove the uh, <clears throat> you got to remove this. Um, well, I didn't do it yet, but okay. You got to remove this one screw right there. You got to remove that screw to remove the tape counter, so you can fully remove this bunch of wires here from the other side. All right. And um, so I did that. All right. So that's just, um, okay, so there's a tape counter, okay, and I put the screw back in so I don't lose it because that's a machine thread screw, all right? And here's the, um, here's the, whatever, the underside of that. And this is um, the old belt that's in there. Can't tell anything, but it's, that's the old belt. Here I'm measuring now, here, let's see here. This is the old belt, so it's nearly 14 centimeters, right? I searched on the internet 
and found that it might might take an FRW 10.1, but no. And then here is the original belt width, and then the new belt width. Well, I didn't use that belt. I went with another manufacturer of the same width as these because this belt is more narrow and if you know anything about belts friction and transmission you want to have the exact same size width belt yes you can use this smaller belt but it'll wear out quicker because there's less material in the belt itself right it's like putting on skinny tires on a car you can run skinny tires but they just wear out quicker so if you put on the original size tires it'll wear as it's supposed to wear and give the proper response when needed from the motor to the flywheel and so on and so forth. Anyway, so here I'm just showing you the that I measured. That's the remember the other one was a 14. This is a new belt. It's a 10.1 belt, so I put it in. And these are other belts that I have. They're thinner and uh, thinner in width, but the same everything else. All right. So here is the old belt. I want to show you what an old belt just lightly held in place, looks like stretched over the flywheel to the motor, all right? Here's what a new belt looks like, lightly stretched again, not quite reaching the motor, so that'll give you the proper tension, all right? I want to point that out. I just wanted to show you the difference there, right? This is the old belt. This is the new belt. Got it? Great, let's move along. So now we installed the new belt. There's the old belt there and screws, and I took a picture with a flash, I don't know why, but okay. All right, so here I had to remove the uh, flywheel. There's the black goo tire. I used, okay, I didn't show this before, but I used these. These are pipe cleaners, all right? And I'll explain how I use my pipe cleaners to clean out. See, it's a bigger diameter, smaller diameter. And as I use them, I, well, get the black out. Then I take my diagonal cutters and I cut that off and it keeps getting shorter and shorter. That was it. And here I'm outside just, it's all nice and clean, all right? And I didn't put the belt on, but. So here's a new belt on. And yes, I went through a whole lot of Q-tips to clean this, all right? And then here I'm I clean the inside of this. Got all the dust out of it, all all off the circuitry and everything. And then here's the inside speakers. And then um, now this has got some kind of coke or something sprayed on the paper. I couldn't clean that off, and I wasn't about to paint them, so I cleaned it as best I could. But I didn't want to soak the paper and ruin the speaker, so I left it pretty much like that but I got most of it cleaned up here I clean the ends well here okay this is before I cleaned it. I just want to show you there's dust in the speakers that's why I took it apart so here I'm I've cleaned it I think okay so now I'm yeah so now I'm putting it back together and I stuck a screwdriver in there and into the back of the motor and adjusted the speed all right even though it has its own adjustment here but I wanted to get it bang on so it was and then I'm using my favorite uh, Fleetwood Mac tape and so anyway and then here we are right now this morning I just took this picture it's 1403 and what you're seeing is the uh, stereo light and some other light and then there's the uh, music search light it has one going through the direction it flashes when it's working. Okay, and that's the first picture. So now, now, let me let's see here. Have I got anybody watching me? I am live. Okay. So now let me, uh, well, oh, I did all that with, well, okay, here. You know, I did all that without ever zooming this thing into the darn thing. Well, here, let me just race through. Oh, yes. I'm just having too much fun here. All right, now here, let me race through my pictures. Let's see here. Bang, 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 bang. What was the most important thing here? It don't matter. Just, this is so similar to, it's similar to the, 
to the other box, right? And I took all these pictures. You sit here and count them, okay? Yeah, that was that was important to me. Okay. Anyway, so here we are. Great. Okay. Too much fun. So now, now what I want to do? Let me wide this out again. All right. Fifteen minutes. Okay. So let me put this down over here. I'm gonna show you that. Let me turn the light on so you can see it a little bit better. All right. So can you see? turn this on and well that's about as good as I'm going to get like that. So I've been playing the tape all this time right? If you want to scoot to the next song, this doesn't have selections, I only does it one time at a time but you hit that it flashes that it's doing music search okay and it'll like that go to the next song so there's the next song. Video meters, they work when it gives sound, right? And of course, you want to go back the other way. Whoops. Go back. To <laughs> so the other side works. So it does like that. I think it. Some of this music is not. Anyway. <clears throat> that wasn't quite the beginning of that song, but. There we go. Now, seconds of my favorite little piece of music here, right, ever so briefly. Here it is, Fleetwood Mac Hits, what I used to, this has been eaten a few times, so, but anyway, just hit play. So much for that. Um, let's see what is that? All right, so that that. Oh, and then of course, if you're not okay, so we have the cassette out, right? I've got the CD pair playing. So if I go back, to what, well, that's four. But hit go from here. You hit uh, line in, and it's oh, I'm sorry, it's not on. Hit turn it on. talking about iconic Available for Paula Poundstone at attpac.org. 
Essential updates with in-depth coverage and enlightening conversations every day. NPR. pulled out the plug. Do you see that? Got it right in the perfect place, but here. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.